All right, so this is part two, three, four. I don't even know where we are anymore, but Bao is going to narrate the Fannie Mae trade, like the most famous trade, I think, in all of penny stocks, everything, OTCs, anything. So he got us. We're, we're kind of ready to go. So, Bao, go yeah, ahead. Perfect. Yeah. All right, guys. So I've never, ever talked about this in detail like this. I've actually never really shown anybody this. I, you see on some of the MIC ads, because fuck, man, we're trying to get people to join, and they see this because it's real. I really don't like to talk and brag about this. Other people have actually done the bragging and talking for me, but um, this is, Harry, this is the first time, I, and James, I've shown you yeah. guys. I mean, that's the thing. I mean, if... I mean, take a look at that, dude. So I was trading Fannie Mae with four accounts. Uh, I wish I had more data than this, but so these are the four accounts. Each one of those, so there's two Sterling and one of the bottom is DOS. So there, there, there are four different accounts and they're all trading Fannie Mae. And you see like, geez, add it up, man. 400, this is all, mind you, in maybe four hours of trading. That's, That's crazy. crazy. Four fucking hours of trading, bro. Um, Jesus. Not swinging, scalping. <laughs> so when you say that you can't scalp, definition of scalping varies from one person to another person, right? So I was just, so if you add that up, man, so first account was 460, 605, 154, and 200. So that adds up to what? So it's 200, two, I don't know. It should be like 1.42. 1.42. So I think it should add up to 1.4, 1.42 million in four Jesus. hours. In four fucking hours. Okay? Yeah, that's insane. This is, this is on 5.9. And mind you, I was making money all that week. So it's not like, oh, he got lucky on one fucking trade. Yep. So I'm going to tell you something, man. It's, this is the culmination of everything I fucking learned. And I just woke up one day having... I call it luck, but luck is because of preparation, right? Yeah. You make your own luck, right? So it's when luck, luck is meets when, opportunity and yeah, hard work. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. And so yeah. people have lucky, you know, you make your own luck. So it just so happens that I just did it. I don't know. I, this, this is probably a one in a billion that if I can go back to that day that I could do this because it's a combination of getting the fields I wanted to do exactly what I wanted to do. Right. And so when people see this, it's like, I don't like to really talk about this because it's this not very realistic. Yeah, this is yeah. just like the crowning achievement of my career up to that point. Right. My basically the P and L account. I, I, I don't look at this as like, you know, this was basically like the, my crowning achievement is helping people to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's sure. the thing. So, so I'm going to narrate how that happened. So during the week, you take a look at the stock. I have a three-day rule. I made the three-day rule kind of famous on Twitter. Yeah. And so so I, the, before the three-day uh, three days is actually day zero. I call it the day zero when they sneak in the volume. It's a sneaky little fucking day, right, where they're getting their insiders in, and then the next day they blow it out, right? Yeah. And so you count the days. So the day zero are 522 and 523. Yeah, I could tell, yeah. It basically barely moves, right? Like 20 cents. Yeah, it just slowly creeps. It's creeping two days, 20 cents a day, which on a penny stock is nothing, right? Yeah, exactly. And then all of a sudden, boom, volume comes in on 524 out of nowhere. So technically that is day, you know, you could call that day, day two or day one. It's, 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 it's up to you to decide. So that was the, so so what happens is on the three-day rule is this, guys. The day zero, if you're lucky to spot day zero, okay, and sometimes day zero is a faker and <laughs> next day things, right? So a lot of these people try to like anticipate and you die too. So you yeah. can't be sized in. So where I'm sizing in is on 524. So 524 happens, I'm day trading at everything. And the end of the day, I'm like, this is still day one. Yeah. Okay, day zero, day one. So I am in massive size overnight, maybe 48,000 shares. For paying stock, that's a massive size. Yeah. Okay, 48,000 shares or something like that. Um, and then, holy fuck, it gaps up. So instantly I'm up like a buck or whatever the fuck it is, right? Yeah. I'm up a day, like, like I said, man, I was making 50, 100 grand a day leading into the big day, right? So, and then on 528, I'm like, dude, this is scary. This is scary territory. $4 is scary fucking territory, right? Is because it came from $2, bro. And this is day two or day three, right? Depending on which yep. way you look at it. 
And I'm like, the, and so 528, I was actually trying to short some too. So midday, you see like a lot of people try to short at $4 line and then it held it, right? But, but I knew I had a secret rule that I told everybody, these stocks will not go down unless they want it to go down. Yep. And it's usually triggered by the stock going red on the day. Yep. And that's how we get to the first red day rule that we use for, for every stock uh, now, right? It doesn't matter if it's OTC, small cap or large cap. Yep. A multi-day runner. So in MIC, we call the FRD, first red day. And this is where that comes from. First red day. So, so these guys are geniuses, whatever, on Twitter, I don't give a damn. They're shorting this shit too early. Yep. I understand because I'm a day trader, right? They're a fundamentalist. They're looking at filings that's worthless and all. You know what I'm saying? Bullshit. So I'm not going to get to the catalyst that runs this. Uh, there's a bunch of catalysts that, that, that drove this up like this. Yep. But um, I'm just talking about pure technical stuff. You don't have to do any fundamentals, which I didn't do any fucking fundamentals. I just I looked at the news. The government was yep. pumping this shit up and all that stuff. Right? Yep. So um, I'm using my fucking rules, which is the, the three-day rule and the first red-day rule. Yep. So I gap, so I gap, so each day that goes up, I gap much less. I think I'm in 15,000 15, shares only, something yep. like that, on, uh, on 528 overnight gapping. And during pre-market, I was, I thought that was a topic. They, 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 uh, they kind of gap down or, you know, it's all funky shit, right? Yeah. And so, and so I tried to short some, I actually lost. I was actually red at the start and I was like, fuck, right? Um, <laughs> this is how I am, man. It doesn't matter. I'm losing a dollar, a dollar, or fucking hundred thousand. I'm so pissed. Right? <laughs> so I'm, I'm down like four thousand, but I was up like hundred grand the day before. I am so pissed, right? It doesn't matter, but um, and so, <laughs> but I knew like, okay, pre market. So this stock used to be a New York Stock Exchange stock, large cap. Yeah, it used to be fifty dollars, and so that's why it traded pre market. Pure OTCs don't usually trade pre market. It's because there are algos left over from New York Stock Exchange. Yep. All the way up, there used to be Citadel, Arca, showing size of 100,000, 200,000, yep. 300,000 share bids and offers. Yep. Because it's still using the same algo from New York Stock Exchange. And so pre-market, I had to get up early and I was actually red. And so but when it opened up, it started running. I was like, fuck yeah. So, Remember, I was a notoriously big time long back then. And so, and so I started piling in on this stock. And I was in 200,000 shares long at the open. Jesus. Right? And so this was like $4.38, and whatever, $4 and whatever, right? So, so you can look at the, uh, the time, 9.30, 9.30. That was, uh, that was when OTC opened. Yep. So there was no, supposedly no pre-market. And that's why it doesn't show the chart count, right? Yep. But, but there's like a bunch of funky action on the pre-market. Yep. Um, so I was in 200,000 shares, but I had four accounts. And I was not all four. I was trading with fuck, maybe three or four million dollars in that in these, across these accounts, right? So I, had, I still had a shitload of buying power left. Yep. And so I had probably like a million dollars of open orders and a million dollars of stock that I, I already own, but, uh, right? And so when it started running up, I was like trying to stair step myself. I wanted to fill more, but I couldn't. After a certain point, I was like, fuck, I'm not going to fill. Yeah. And, and so, but this is the genius part. I didn't cancel my fucking orders. <laughs> I left my buys in. The, the dumb fucks, the dumb greedy fucks ran it out because they're thinking there's a the million dollar bid behind the scene. Yeah. So, so it's the same thing as an algo putting a fucking million dollar bid, right? Yeah. But it was legal because like, fuck, I wanted to fill. He could have sent me, but he didn't send me. So notice they fucking squeeze the fuck out of the shorts. The shorts got blown out of the water. And then I had very good timing. So at the very top, when I wanted to sell my 200,000 share long, I fucking, what I did was I did a fucking sell order, but I oversold. And I think I sold like 500,000 shares at the top. Yeah. So I fucking, you know how I sold it? I was able to sell the liquidity. It's because I didn't go through night. I fucking slammed the Arca, the Knights. I slammed every route I had. And City, City, Citadel had showing like 200,000 shares by itself. I swiped every single motherfucker off the bid. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you imagine 
500,000 shares at five something. That's like $2.5 million of a penny stock. Yeah. And then all of the least, ECNs got swiped. And I was scared, bro. They filled were you me. Were shitting your pants? You- I was shitting my pants. They, 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 <laughs> filled me, they filled me in like 10 seconds. <laughs> so because remember this is running up bro this is running up so so in, in order for me to exit i'll give you a, i'll give you a good tip in order if you're playing size the only way to exit a stock when you're playing size is to be ahead of the curve to sell when there are people still buying yeah. if this thing had reversed game the fuck over yeah. i sold this shit on the way up I happened to nail it right at the fucking top. And when I nailed it, I shorted it. I was like, this motherfucker is going to go down when I wanted to go down. So I shorted the fucking shitload, 300,000 shares yep. or something at the very top. I pulled all my fucking buys. Yep. <laughs> all of a sudden, market makers were short 500,000 shares at the top. Everyone's so you, short. So you imagine you're stuck 500,000 shares yeah, short at the top. Shares. Not only is me. But there are other guys that are like me, and now they're stuck millions of shares on the top. Because I, one, one other guy who shorted the same fucking shit I did. So, in two thousand, we probably shorted eight hundred thousand shares of this, four million dollars of this shit, right? So now we're stuck. So now, if you take a look at the top, they're stuck now with five hundred thousand shares at five something at the very top, yeah. and I'm sitting here with a massive fucking two hundred thousand shares. I'm already up like a quarter million, realized at the yeah. top. Right, because it ran for four bucks to five bucks or something like that. Yeah. And so I was like, "Fuck, dude, this is great. I'm up to the fourth bill, right? Two hundred fifty thousand, whatever." But I thought I was like happy as fuck for that day. I thought it was like, and so, but when I shorted it, I sweat every bid. The bid I sweat most was all the ECMs, which is the Arcas and the yeah. Citadel, Citadel, all that shit. So I was, and then I fucking stuck night too. I fucking night probably took a ton of my shares too. Yeah. I kept on shorting this shit. I was scared because it filled me so fast. But then it stalled. I was like, fuck. You imagine I'm stuck with 300,000 shares. Yeah. Right? And every fucking penny goes up. I'm at like three Gs or some shit. Right? What was the biggest size you had on on it? Like, what was like the biggest you got? Like 300,000 shares or some shit again. Like Jesus Christ. So that's what I said. So every penny on a 300,000 share is a, it's three grand, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you imagine every ticket is three thousand dollars, bro. Yeah. Jesus. And so that's why it cratered down like this. It cratered down because they were stuck so much of this shit and it parabolic and it was day three. Every fucking rule, everything I learned up to that point yep. was to use to, to do this trade. First red yep. day, and then I, what I did was this I covered at the bottom, I waited, I waited, I waited. I didn't fucking scalp this shit. Because this um, bulletin board like this is much easier to time. Yeah. Uh, they had the level two. The level twos worked great on that. And I, I could read the fucking level twos. I knew exactly because I was training this shit for so long. I knew exactly what night and everybody was doing. And so at the very bottom, guess what I did? I covered my shit. went fucking long. Mm-hmm. Did the same exact shit with five minutes short. So I bought all the motherfucking shit that all these motherfuckers dumped. and rolled it all the way back to four bucks. Boom. I was up. I was up 1.8 million at that point. And I was like, yeah, bitch, I'm going to go for 2 million. <laughs> so you almost made 2 million that day. I, I almost made, I was going for 2 million. And so, I, so, what, so what happened was, what happened was I, so I, I, was, I was up to like 1.8 mil, bro. Yeah. Well, one, something like that, 1.6 to 1.8. And so I, there was a 50 cent slippage. So if you take a look at, uh, so I shorted, so I went long and I sold at four bucks, right? Yeah. And then if you take a look at down, so on the way down, take a look at down. I covered on the bottom. Yeah. Um, but they wouldn't fucking fill me or some shit. And so during that 50 cents up down, you said that consolidation up down, that was yeah. where I lost like two, two to four in the grand on the slippage. Jesus yeah, right Christ. 50 cents, yeah, 50 cents. I, I did it. So I lost two times yeah. and as I'm done, fuck this shit. I closed up shot at 1.4. I was, like, yeah, I was, like, I was up to like 1.8. I was up at 1.8 at one point. And then due to a huge slippage of fucking, it's like, fuck, I was used to be screaming, cursing, bro. 50 cents, 300,000 shares, like, fuck, yeah. two times. You know, so, done. Jesus. <laughs> after since that day, how, I'll tell you, man. You- I, 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 let me finish the story. So, ever since that day, the very next day, say it all, 
uh, nights, all these motherfuckers turned off their algo. That you now you you would never see another hundred thousand bid on that shit ever again. Every everybody cheated. They turned down their algo to show only two thousand five hundred shares, so that they don't get wiped out. <laughs> how did you even like? What did you? How did you even like? That like live the next day. Like, how did you even like just go about your life after like that? Has to be the most emotional like. Bro, adrenaline high. to be honest, I didn't know how much I was making. So the way I trade is the same way I do now. I don't look at the P and L until I'm done. When I so I, I'm gonna tell you how, why I fucking sold. Because I looked at the P and L, I'm like, what the fuck? I'm up a quarter million at five dollars. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so, and then the same thing, man. And so when I, so a lot of times, like, because this, look at the time. This thing was epic, bro. It was one hour of fade. From five dollars down to two thirty, one yeah. continuous hour without an uptick. What do you do during that time? I know what you fucking sweat with. I, I, I have fucking three fingers on the mouth button ready to cover. <laughs> <laughs> I could, bro. I didn't take a. Sh- I didn't take a sh- piss. I was. I almost pissed in my fucking. My pants, my office, my chair. I was like, fuck this shit. I'm going to buy a new fucking house. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to shit and piss on the floor. I was like, I'm not leaving this fucking shit. Fucking animal. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I was like, I was like, dude, I had to pee so bad, bro. <laughs> you imagine if I didn't pee a whole fucking half a day? <laughs> I, 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 Jesus I, Christ. <laughs> I was ready to like take shit on the floor and buy a new house. To <laughs> <laughs> be honest, like this was all live. I saved the the chat logs from um, this other chat room I was in. Um, yeah. Right, so it was all live, man. And I'm like shaking. If I'm posting this. I'm always helping people call in the top of the bottom. So people think I know top ticking bottom ticking. I was the king of top ticking bottom ticking, and so. So no one knew until it happened. I didn't even know, right? And so it was yeah. like, holy shit. I was pretty much numb. I didn't know what to say, what to do. It was just a, a, a surreal. It was basically a, that was like, I'm done now. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something, man. It, it, it went from the happiest day of my life to probably one of the saddest days of my life. And that was the day that I was like, what now? What now? I'm not happy. I thought that by doing this, I would be the happiest motherfucker on earth. What happened was it changed the people around me. I was like no longer the normal guy. Yeah. I was making money before too. They just it was they just didn't know it. The moment they found out, like okay, they thought they were making money, maybe ten thousand dollars, right? But when they saw millions in like four hours, then I was never the same. My friends were were not never the same. I had to find new friends because you know like they're, they're like. Well, wow. Val can afford it. Val can pay. I'm like, why the fuck? You know what I'm saying? Shit like yeah. that. It's just, they treat you very differently because, like, dude, these, you know, if people are making 50 grand a year and then you're fucking, like, you know what I'm saying? My commissions yeah. that day were their fucking salary, bro. Yeah. I paid, like, you know, Jesus commissions that day. Like, you know? um, yeah. um, family didn't treat you different? Family, too, or just. just no one like, knew. My family really didn't know. So what I did was like, my, I already took care of my family before this happened. So the way I am is that I, I paid off my family's debts, my sister's debts. I bought my mom what she said. I bought a house for my, I bought a house for my sister, I bought my house for my mom. This is before this trade. I was already like doing well. And so my family didn't really do. think about it because they didn't even know because I, I, I never lived a flashy lifestyle. So yeah. I was driving a used fucking BMW. You know, and I'm like wearing the black t-shirt and the flip-flops. Yeah, yeah dude. I mean, you, know, you know that story about my Ferrari, right? I was in a flip-flop and black t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> uh, and and the reason why this was, became the saddest day because after, after all these things, they, they shut down my account. And, and um, the, about the, the Ferrari is because, dude, they, they shut me down. Um, uh, and then no broker would open me up because not they, they're like, dude, I heard about you. There's no way because Knight would for a bit. So I was, um, I couldn't even open a trading account in some of these places. You know? Um, and so that, then, then I had all this fucking money watered into my checking account. And I was like, fuck. So I went to the mall to buy 50% off, 
uh, slacks at the Now Republic. True story, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, dude. The next week or some shit, uh, I had all this fucking money, millions of dollars in my account because they shut down my account. Um, uh, I, I went to the mall, to, and then on the way to the mall, I saw a Ferrari dealership. <laughs> so I went in there and fuck, I walked out with a Ferrari. <laughs> That's crazy. That's yep. fucking so. So you have, I mean, that is literally the highest high of trading, right? For like a retail trader, that's, that's got to be it. Like that's. That, that was basically the monetary, because it, it kind of made me sad, because I'm like, what's next, bro? Yeah, so I, thought was- that, I thought that it, it would change my life in terms of making me happy, but it made me miserable, bro. They shut me down. Friends kind of like treated me differently. They, they, they thought I was an asshole. You, kinda, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it was basically like. Yeah, like what the fuck, man? My relationships went down the hill, you know, shit like that. So, and here I am, just a normal, the same. I'm the same motherfucker, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was the highest high in terms of monetary, but emotionally, you know, probably on the kind of that started me on a spiral, suicide spiral down. I'm not joking. That was when I I went offline for three to four years. I was going dark. No one knew what I was doing. I was sporadically trading once or twice a week and getting drunk the rest of the time. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't need to work anymore, right? So, and then I met, that was when I was trading with Alex. Alex was basically, because after this, I I traded with this guy for maybe five years. And he, that day I made 1.4, he made 1 million. The only reason I didn't make 3 million, because he stole all my prints, by the way. That that slippage, (laughs) that slippage was him taking my filth. We traded the same exact way. And I was very happy that he made that million. So after he made that million, he disappeared. He quit. He retired trading because um, he's like, fuck, man, what, what else is there, right? And then right after that, that, the Wolf of Wall Street movie came. They shut down, the, uh, they shut down OTC, uh, FBI, SEC started being on my ass because of that movie, shit like that. Um, and so it was a very dark time in my life. And I, I was like, dude, I, and so I met Alex. And Alex, uh, I'm like, dude, I felt great again. I felt like, uh, like, like how I felt, like I found a passion for trading because I, I was teaching Alex, you know, mentoring him. And it was just fun to have someone to trade with. He's yeah. a fucking super bright kid, super humble, super smart. He taught me a lot of things too. It was just, it was not a one way thing. You know what I'm saying? It was a true friendship that was building. Um, and so it kind of saved my life. Alex, I'm telling you, man, it's like, you know, because I found passion again because I was like, fuck, man, I was drinking. I was heavily drinking every day to, to numb everything. Yeah. It's just, you, you imagine when you have nothing to live for and, you know, like, what the fuck, man? I'm going to come back and do what? Make $10,000? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah, there's no motivation <laughs> to keep going really after that. Oh, so, yeah. And so the motivation was, was helping a friend and having someone to, I'm telling you, man, it's like you have to have fun. After yeah. a while, just, if you're doing this shit by yourself, it's no fun. That's why I was not in really in a chat room or anything. I was like, fuck this shit. So I was training by myself. And so having, having like, you know, this is why guys on Wall Street work together, man. That's why it keeps them motivated. It's like a friendly competition. It's like a right? camaraderie. Yeah, man. And you always have to have like, you know, something fun, like friendly competition to keep motivating you. The reason I made this much money and the reason I took the size is I was like, what the fuck, motherfucker? I didn't know you were trading this much. You stole all my purse. Fuck you. I'm going to be better. And so it was me and my friend competing with yeah. one another, pushing each other up. And so, you know, and so when he left and when he retired, I had nothing left to live for. Was you that the guy saying? who came to the MIC meetup? Yeah, David Coaster. Yeah. David. The German guy that lives yeah. in the, the islands, yeah. yeah. So, so I, how did I, you... Yeah, I mentored Sorry. him from how scratch, did... and then, then he left me. <laughs> so then Alex came in. So how did you, how did you like, come to even like, get to MIC? Like, were you at a point where, like, you were going like, to... Was trading even great, like... Were you even happy with that? Or is it just like, I need to start MIC with Alex to like find a purpose I, in my life again? I, I was basically like, I love trading, but there's just no passion for me. It's like the same old fucking shit. So it goes back to Harry's question. Like, how do you transition, right? So I was like, you know what, man? I'm going to go cold turkey on OTC. I can still trade it and make a shitload of money on it. But for me, it was never about the money anymore. You know what I'm saying? What the fuck? It was me trying to like, trying to get rid of this image of being a penny stock scalper and getting fucking FBI calls and shit like yeah. that. And you know what I'm saying? And I was like, okay, I'm going to find a new challenge. And so I'm going to fucking take what I know to do small caps. And to be honest, it was very rough in the beginning because it's very different in the way things are filled. 
So in penny stocks, it was very difficult to get a fill. So a lot of times the stock goes like you couldn't fill. And so you just yeah. stuck with what you got stuck. With NASDAQ, I could fill unlimited amount of size within a second. Yeah. And so, so it, it got, you have to get used to the fact that, bro, you can, you can fill a million dollar position in like five seconds. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so that was getting something new and start and, and, and realizing it's a different type of manipulation that these algos are doing, you know? Uh, and, and the gapping thing didn't really work when these things opened pre-market at 4 a.m. And, and you have huge wells in there are, that are doing what I used to do to Fannie Mae. Yeah, exactly. And so you have to develop a solid process. But what translated well was the process. So the secret, all these years, guys, people are using moving averages, all this Fibonacci bullshit, lines. Lines, motherfucker. Take a look at that chart that you see there. Yeah, exactly. Those lines are pivot lines. Those 290, 342. And look how awesome they, a lot of it matches. <laughs> it's amazing. It's amazing. And you combine this with the normal support and resistance. So the same process that, that teach MIC, how you start with the year. Remember, I go to big charts and, and do the yeah. year? Yeah. So, so let me repeat that. I'm going to tell you how you do it. So, so this is why I taught... Everybody, the guy that made a million bucks, Alex, everybody, okay? So you start with a year. Because what happens, like, there's lines everywhere. There's lines everywhere. You have to know which lines to use. So I started with the, the, the widest, which is a year. But if you can't find it, you go two years. So go expand it until you see a line, right? That's yeah. like a major, major line. Yeah. Um, and then I'll tell you the secret of the top ticket and bottom ticket. So you can't just stare at level two and tape all day. What you do is when, when these things start to parabolic at near five bucks, I knew it around there because then you pull up a historical chart. The historical chart has lines on it. And then when it comes to your, that's why I call the areas of interest. When it comes to the areas of interest, yeah. then you zoom in, you look. And so, so I, I'm going to walk around picking my ass until it got to my areas of interest. And so that's how I knew when shit was bouncing. So they can look at the bottom, man, at the 250, um, 529, 2050. Yeah. If you draw a line, it fucking kind of matches 424 at the beginning. Yeah. So, so around 250, I knew it was close. So then I, then I focused. When it got around, you see what I'm saying? Each major line that it broke, so every time it came to an area of interest, I would focus. And then when it broke under it, I could just kind of chill. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And so the thing, these guys keep staring at it all day long. They're gonna, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. But yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm, I'm focusing on the major lines, which is the areas of interest, and then I zoom in on level two and the tape and all that. Okay, so there's yeah. ample tape reading, but I hate to talk about tape reading because the moment that you understand tape reading, you, you should know how to trade raise and you develop your own. I don't need to teach a beginning how to misread tape because you have exactly. to understand charting and all this shit beforehand. Exactly. 100%. So, Completely yep. agree. That's the most it's asked a, question that we get in weekend mentoring every single, you know, and me and Tosh are just like, they're like, oh, you know, you can predict a squeeze. You can predict a whatever. You can predict that. It's like, no, you know, like everyone is just it, people. People want, uh, you know, a holy grail. sauce or a holy yep. grail. And they're like, oh, well, you know, <clears throat> if I just watch the tape, you know, all the time, that's how I'm going to. That's how. I'm, but it should line up with your plan. It should line up with your yep. lines. You know, it's a confirmation of what yep. you're seeing on the chart. Yeah, yeah, exactly right, man. Because like, what the fuck, you look at tape for five hours? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you should look for, to, you, you, it's like watching someone fucking sign language and looking for one sign <laughs> for four hours. Exactly. So, it's so, like Chinese. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're reading Chinese. So that's what the process we talk about in MIC and, and I, I make so many of those Trading Fish Academy videos on it, right? You start with the, the, the lines from the one year you zoom in yeah. to the areas of interest and then that's exactly the same process. So yeah. I look at a chart. So, so another skill we have is you can take a look at a chart and, and, and kind of sense the trend, right? You know exactly. when the stock is changing trends and things like that. So, so those are the things that moved over to small caps very well. And people with small caps are using such, such advanced, complicated bullshit. But not, I mean, it would work for them. You know what I'm saying? All this stupid shit, right? I mean, yeah. for me, I, I call it like, you know, man, it, unless you really know what the fuck you're doing, 
and, and you're using it correctly, you can misuse a fucking indicator and fucking blow up, you know? So, so when I moved over, I was like, fuck, man, it's the same fucking shit. It's a bunch of fucking lines. <laughs> That's it. It's a bunch of resistance support and pivot lines. And no one knew about the pivot lines. Uh, I knew about yeah. the pivot lines because my platform had it. I didn't even know what they were for all these years. I thought it was a magical line support <laughs> line, but they turned out to be pivot lines. And so well, that's why I taught you guys to put it into your things. And it, you know, it's an, it's an additional line. Will it work all the time? Exactly. No, no lines work all the time. But if you take a look at $2.90 pivot line, take a yeah. look at 529. It sounds right off of that fucking line. Exactly. I, find, I mean, more often than not, the lines match up and they work. I mean, it's more just, it's probability. But again, the probability says if you draw the correct line, you learn the correct it's, line. Yeah, it's also self-fulfilling prophecy. If enough people trust the line, they'll be getting self-fulfilling yeah. prophecy. Yeah, exactly. So, so I guess, I mean, I, I guess our kind of like our last question, right, would be like, how did you guys even like, how did you and Alex even start MIC? Like you had this process. At this point, you like had this idea of lines and like pivot points. So, and how so I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you something. The, the, the reason the reason all these years were I did not want to teach people is because I couldn't get the exact process to teach a beginner. The way I was training before was so complex; it needed to have a systematic approach to day trading. And so, until I figure out the secret sauce, okay? So I'll tell you what the secret sauce was. So. I, I, I did the low hanging fruit strategy for so long. That was my bread and butter. No yep. one knew about that shit. I called it the low hanging fruit because I, I named something so obscure that even if people heard about it, they don't know what the fuck it is, right? I taught this to Alex and then I met Tosh. I met Tosh three years ago on my birthday. Yep. Uh, he, he came over and he brought me it's a bottle of coffee. One of the best stories ever. Yep. And so it's fucking awesome. So we spent all night drinking and getting fucking fucked up, drinking and talking and then I said, Tosh, I want to teach you something. I'm going to teach you this fucking strategy. I've never taught anybody. Um, learn this shit. Only trade this shit for a year and then tell me how you do. It changed his life. He fucking became a consistent trader, trading the low-hanging fruit strategy. That was when I knew it worked. That was when, so he was kind of like a, a test case. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so, and so a year later, I was like, so, so before we launched, though, I needed to complete the circle. I was like, how the fuck could, I'm a short trader. How do you fucking complete the circle? That's when I discovered the, the zombie rule during those years, I discovered yeah. the zombie rule. Me and Alex were together and we noticed a pattern, the zombie yeah. rules and all that shit. So what was, what was destroying the consistency from a small cap, short perspective, short traders perspective is the fact that the algos are fucking using this zombie hour, which is basically uh, when they run out of volume to manipulate the no, quick. Exactly. Yep. yep. And, and they're able to do that because of the float size. And then they so run it up. Yep. So we correlated all this together because you know it doesn't. You know, so we correlate the low, uh, the the low float over rotation, all that. And so we. Yep. That's why Alex has a rule. He just stops, bro, and it works. It fucking stops. So we, you can make some money. The problem is this: you make money some days. Um, you can make money four days out of five of uh, trading, shorting during zombie hours. It's the problem is the one time you lose, it it teleports just like this today. Yeah. Yep. Teleports like a point two points. You're fucking dead. You basically turn a big green day into a big red day instantly. Yeah. You get yeah. trapped. And so Alex says, "Fuck this shit. I'm gonna make man. I make money every day before zombie. Pretty much like all the time. Yeah. The problem is I stick around to help you guys. <laughs> that's, that's like yeah, I lose my money back. But I'm just joking. But you know what I'm saying. So if you if you if you want to be a consistent day trader, you can totally have a day job. And this is why we started MIC to help people. To realize that, hey yeah. man, you don't need to be a fucking big swinging dick motherfucker swinging hundreds of thousands of shares to make money all day long. You just need to work the fucking first hour, nail and bail and get the fuck out. Yeah. And so we, we started MIC for the little people because every chat room out there is always trying to brag about being the best trader, right? I'm the best trader. But yeah. I'm, I have no ego because I've been there. These guys can keep bragging about their hundred thousand dollar days. I don't give a fuck. That was like a like commission back then, right? So, <laughs> yeah, I'm not know, joking. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so for me, it was. More, I don't need a fucking shit. So that's the thing, man. The people that brag about all the shit, you know, that they have some sort of insecurity about some shit. Yeah. Right. So, so I was like, fuck this shit. So I, I created a fucking environment to teach the normal fucking underprivileged people, bro. These are the guys that no one wants to teach. Everybody wants to teach a bunch of people with money that are big. 
big traders because it would be cool. Who's going to help a guy that has that, that has no experience? It's going to ask you yeah. questions like, what the fuck is a line? What's a chart? What, what, what does pair balls mean? What's SSR mean? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Those, and so it's very hard to find a group of people that, that, that share the same human, like, like fucking societal, like, I want to help people. Like, you guys are good, man. Harry, man, I love you. James, you got... And that's why, like, when I met Harry, he was fucking helping people for yeah. nothing. And yeah. then James, uh, I basically made you a mod, James, I tell you right now, because I, I, you gave away the fucking monitors, man. Yeah. Remember, remember that story? I was yeah, yeah. if you didn't know how to, you didn't know how to trade well back then. It didn't matter to me. Yeah. I knew that you were humble, hardworking. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's the main, I, that's, that's the main, I'm telling everybody out there, guys. It's not how smart, rich, good looking, even though we are now. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> I look like Farmer talking, in yeah. this light. I look like Farmer <laughs> Jr. in this light. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, 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 I'm telling you, man, it's your passion, it's your, yeah. you, your humility, your discipline, your lack of ego, man. I hate the ego game. Because what happens if you have nope. ego, you're never going to learn. You're never going to think you're wrong. That's why MIC works. Guys. That's why MIC works. No one has ego. Like, I, dude, Alex is one of the most, like, you'd think meeting a kid that's, like, 25 or 26 or whatever he is now. He's 24? <laughs> 25 no, no, no. No, he's my age. He's my age. I think he's 25. Did, did he uptick? Did he uptick in here? I don't even know how old I am. I think I'm 26. He, no, I mean, he's 25, he, bro. I think he's 25. Yeah, whatever. I just like to think that he's my age, so I don't feel as bad. <laughs> but... <laughs> It's, I mean, you've never met someone so like humble and like, and that's how MIC works because people won't teach someone else who like has no experience. If you're making a hundred thousand dollars in a day, 10,000, 5,000, you don't want to teach someone that's making yeah. no money, but MIC yep. does like my, like, that's what we teach is the new guys who have no shot yet. And they're yep. looking for that help. Like that, that's, that's the whole I thing, work. man. Because I told, I told myself when I made it, quote, unquote, I mean, I really don't think I made it, but you know what I'm saying? Like when, when I get yeah. to a point where I can help someone, that's what I mean by make it. When you get to the point where you can help someone, help someone. That's yep. why when I saw you, James and Harry, I was like, fuck, I, I wanted you guys to be a part of this. Cause I know you guys are the same spirit. Cause yeah, Harry's yeah. been helping people online. You know, I talk to Harry all the time. He broke down and he cried a lot. You know, that, that's the sort of people I like, man. I like, I like people that I cried in front of people. Right? I forget to tell you guys. Oh, I'm a sensitive guy, you know, so. You guys want me to cry right now? I can. I can. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Just look at the mirror naked. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I look at the naked, mirror naked. I cry every night, brother. <laughs> every night. When I shower. <laughs> I go to bed, I just cry over my <laughs> Yeah, bro, yeah, yeah, I mean, that's the, that is the point of it. It's like this podcast was made because we're all human. Like we all have like emotions. Yeah. Like trading is like, yes, it's robotic. There's numbers on a screen. Like you have green days, red days, whatever. But we are all human. We're all here. And like that's why MIC is so, I think, successful. Like what it does because we all just are actual people. It's not some some robotic pay me fifty exactly. dollars, hundred dollars a month. It's exactly. It's, yeah. And that's why we weed out. That's why you notice, man, we weed out a lot of the fucking guys that boast and brag and all that shit. And it's, it's fucking awesome. You lead by example, guys. You guys, Harry and James and all the moderators, you guys are the fucking next generation, man. I'm fucking very proud to be your friend. I'm very proud to have a part in your your journey. And yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's what it is, man. I love yeah. this, man. I love yeah, this. Yeah, I'm going to get I... Modern Rock tattooed right here with a little heart. <laughs> 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 gonna get a rock right here no, uh, okay, one last question though, for real. Kate, you mentioned this, you mentioned this, this is a little weird question, but it's something that you did mention today. Okay, this so during the, tra during the trading day, do you actually hide your P&L for the entire day? No, I know, that's the dumbest shit. Yeah, okay, I was going to say. No. I was like, no. People, I people, people hide it. You know, I'm just going to man, it's just funny shit, because I, I, I see a, a famous chat room guru streamer of uh, pumper guy, and you know, I want to hide my PL. But what happens? He, he closes the trade. He goes, I think I had 2,000 shares. Uh, I made 10 cents. I think I made this much. It's like, shut the fuck up. Look at your PL. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> You're like, calculating that shit in your head. I was like, there's no way. Yeah. And, and, I, and I, I'm going to tell you, when people say happy, so this is the trick, though. I don't look at my PL because I'm too focused on the charts and, and the print and all that, right? Um, when I'm finished, I look. Yeah, you know, That's and, it. To be, and to be it's honest, like, you know, if, if I'm down, bro, if I'm down, I feel I'm down, I look too. Because I'm like, fuck, 
because we have this max daily loss shit. And to be honest, in a theoretical universe, if you have all the fucking money in the world, you don't give a yeah. fuck. Don't look. But you know what, man? I'm teaching guys that are starting off. They don't have that much money. If you don't fucking look and you turn around, you're having your count gone for the fuck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been there. I think we've had those moments of like, oh, fuck. You, you, know, you know what don't look me? I go take a shit. I come back and they had an offer. Yeah. <laughs> it happens, bro. It does. That's, that's why, you, that's why well, remember we all joke about wanting to create trading diapers. Dude, oh, my God. I have loved this. I think this was like the greatest Yeah, thing. this was definitely all, really good. We all need to do this more often. We all need to get together, even over Zoom. FaceTime, whatever, and fucking break. Yeah. I have more, I have more awesome stories, man. This is the beginning. So, yeah, yeah, thanks, guys, for doing this. All right. I'm glad that we finally oh, got a chance to do this.